Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. Do we really need high school? I believe it's a question that no one's ever really thought of before, at least not in this room. We just kind of go along with the program, but have we really dissected how high school works and, to, and see if it's actually worth it to go the full four years in high school? Is there something more we could do? Are there better alternatives or options? And can we enhance the way we learn? 75% of high school students self-reported that they felt stressed, tired, and bored, among other negative emotions for their high school experience. Most students feel stressed all the time. I believe we can change this. But some get so disengaged and so distracted that they don't feel like learning is worth it, so they drop out. Approximately 1.2 million students in high school drop out each year. And those who make it, who do the great things that they're supposed to do and get through high school, as soon as they walk off that stage, they forget 60% of what they learned in the entirety of the program. 60%, which is ludicrous. If I were to be told that, hey, you're going to go four years, learn all the information you're supposed to need to know to go to the next level in your education or whatever you plan to do, and you're going to not remember half of it once you leave, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to understand why, why can't we make a system that allows us to remember and not forget the information that is so precious for our advancement. Furthermore, let me show you an example of how fast knowledge degradates. Does anyone remember from high school, the Pythagorean theorem, you know, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Who remembers what you learned after that? The law of sine and cosine, anyone remember that? Show of hands, anyone remember that? Who's not a teacher? <laughs> All right, some of these things may be very difficult for people to remember. So finding ways to simplify them should be our top priority in making sure that high school is worth it for the students that are in it. And I'm gonna have fun with you guys, a couple more questions. Does anyone remember from biology what amoebas do or how they move? That's a quick trick question. They don't really move at all. They stay stationary, like some people I know. Anyway, not calling any names out, okay? But the idea is to remember things, you have to have some method of people to remember, to remember some mnemonic device or something that helps people remember. I remember I learned about tryptophan. It's the precursor to serotonin. And I had to remember tryptophan, tryptophan. Okay, that's just a little science point. I, I'm a nerd. I have to say these things. All right, but if we really look at it, to enhance how students learn, we must not waste their time. And that's one of the big points that I'm up here for. After you go to high school, let's say you, you're in high school. I learned something as a freshman, let's say history. I walk over for four years later, I graduate, I go to college, and that same history that I learned here, I have to recall and remember in college. But if we look at Ebbinghaus, who did the theories on, and different studies on forgetfulness, I'll forget his name all the time, Ebenhaus. That was a joke, you can laugh. <laughs> Ebenhaus, you begin to see that after one hour of you learning something from a class, you forget 56% of it. After a day, 66%. And after a week or six days, you have lost a whopping 75% of all that you were supposed to remember without any reinforcement. That shows you how fast knowledge leaves people. So what can we do about this? But before I jump ahead of myself, how can we fix this, this, this gap where I'm supposed to learn something, forget it, and then learn it again? How can we mend this? And my first thought was, hey, why don't we get college credit for high school courses? And that's a good idea. Somebody else actually came up with it, and I'm here telling you about it. But it's a good idea, but it's not perfect yet. We have AP classes, but we find out that it takes an entire year to learn something that takes a college student 15 weeks, and you only get one shot. It's not like you can take it over and over again like a CLEP test, which is another way people get college credit while in high school. The proper tools are, no long, are not being implemented for our students to have an effective time at learning and actually save them the, the trauma of having to forget and remember and relearn things again. Okay. My name is Elijah J.D. Priestley, and I began taking college courses at the age of eight. I was in high school at the time, and this is what kind of sparked this idea of, can I get 
the amount of the same knowledge that someone older than me would learn at my age. I was still taking high school courses, but I was attending Southern universities. I was attending classes to learn for my future. By the age of of 11 and a half, I graduated from high school, and you can see right there. I graduated. You can see me cap and gown. I'm all happy, and I didn't know that they had cafeteria food, so I didn't. I, I wasn't killed by the cafeteria food yet. <laughs> I didn't get my freshman 15 yet. But uh, anyway, the point is, after that, I got my scholarship and I accepted it. Oh. <laughs> after that, after that, I got my scholarship at Southern University, and I really enjoyed going. But let me just back it, bring it back to what I'm trying to say. If we can have a system that allows students to take college courses while they're yet in high school and make that a standard, wouldn't that be a wonderful idea? Some people may think it's too rigorous or it may be too hard for students, but we see that students are capable. You can see that languages don't change. Bonjour means hello no matter how many colleges you go to, whether it's Harvard, Yale, Bonjour is bonjour. It means hello. These things won't change, especially with humanities and other subjects. They don't tend to change much. They aren't altered much by, through time. So what if we can introduce students to auditing classes, one, while they're in middle school, and allow them to understand in, in information that is a level above them so they, they get acclimated to a college pace, but by the time they hit high school, we begin to make it standard that every class you take that is applicable to your college studies, you can get credit for by using a CLEP exam of sorts. And by raising the standards, we must also raise the tools in which we use to teach people. I believe in technology leveling the playing field. Now, you may say, Elijah, you went to school because you are super smart, and people always say, you're a genius, and that is true to an extent, but <laughs> I'm just downplaying it. Uh, that's just true to an extent, but people don't understand that anyone can learn. Batman is not Superman, but guess what? As every DC nerd, and I will personally tell you, Batman can defeat anyone if given the proper prep time and the right tools. Students can learn anything even if they're not super, per se, if they're given the right tools and the right teaching methods to help them. So one of my solutions would be VR. Why? Because I love it so much. And VR is highly addicting. It's very engaging. One thing I found out is that students learn 40, were 40% more confident in what they learned when they learned it with VR. That's something that really blew my mind. If we can set up systems that teach people how to use their brains and how to use their imagination, let me explain, how to use their imagination, they'll be better learners. Why do I say that? Most people, when they see numbers, when they see the equation of the moment upon an axis, they don't know what R cross F means. They don't have that in their mind. They don't have a mental picture of it. But using VR, we can train students in a learning environment that shows them what each number means and what it does in a formula. So kinematics equations won't be as difficult for students to understand the different types of motions and how different projectile motion act works and everything of that nature. They'll be able to understand it better. And it can be applied to every subject. For example, I was in a Calculus three class. And we were learning about Taylor polynomials. And they let me see and find out that they had VR available. And when I told the professor, you didn't tell me you had VR available, he said, like, oh, no, we're just testing this. I said, let me put that on. I put it on, and it opened a new world to me. Instead of just going to class and trying to memorize something, I was in the jungle. I found the Taylor polynomial approximation. You know, I had to figure out what it was, and it was a memorable experience. So what if we brought the a new life to learning and brought an ability for people and students to understand things through experience. Everyone who's ever worked in a biological laboratory knows, hey, when I went there, I started experimenting, I fell in love with what I was doing because you found applicable, you found, <laughs> they're not, <laughs> you found out how to use what you learned. <laughs> anyway, it's good, laugh. Uh, you found out how to use what you learned. And my favorite thing about VR and other tools is VR is just one tool. And I suggest that there should be multi a multiplicity of tools to help students understand the information. Now, one thing that I do want to clear up, I believe that every student is capable of learning things at the college level, but it's about how we introduce it to them. So maybe it may not be VR today, 
but we can work towards that. As educators, we can put in the time and effort to develop new tools that help people learn and grow as they should. I don't believe that there should be this class of super students who are, only a, who are able to do above and beyond and excel. I believe that every student with the right tools and focusing on how people learn, we can change a, the system of high school so that by the time you are two years in high school, you have about a year worth of college credit. I believe that every student has the capability of excelling because time is money again. One year in college costs about $35,000. What if we were able to save them that year? And what if we showed them what was going to happen in the future? What if we showed them where they could be working as an engineer? Stresses and strains on plane parts. They can understand. Pilots go into simulations all the time and get to see. And I remember there was this program. It was a flight school for young children. They put them in a simulator. And I tell you, so many of those children, out of 10, eight of them said, I want to be a pilot. What if we can do that for the children to be engineers, biologists, and then they get a motivation, and it's no longer they're learning in a setting which isn't comfortable for them. They begin to explore new things and get their minds ready for what they can do and showing them, yes, it is possible to learn, and we'll help you along the way. So I do believe with the right amount of prep time and the right tools, students can learn anything. Thank you. Jesus.